gentlemen, welcome to America's Auto Enthusiast Program. This is Auto World. And now, here's your host, Bob Long. Prepare yourself for some very valuable information. We're going to open the hood here on Auto World and talk with one of our lubrication specialists, Dan Watson, with more than 25 years of experience and a whole slew of videos up on YouTube. Dan is one of the largest AMS oil distributors in all of North America. And if you've heard Dan with us before, we've been concentrating initially a lot on motor oil, but today uh, Dan thought it would be a good idea, and I certainly agreed with him 100% to talk about transmission fluids, because certainly today, boy, I remember when it was a big deal when they went from a three-speed automatic to a four-speed automatic, then it went to a five-speed automatic, then six, and then... All of a sudden, Lexus took a jump to eight. And the next thing you know, you've got uh, Jeep and a few other companies with nine speeds. And now you've got a jointly developed gearbox from Ford and Chevrolet. You can get it in the uh, top-end Camaro, the ZL1 Camaro. And I know for a fact that uh, it's going to make its way into many Fords as well. Ten-speed automatic. Combine that with uh, a mixing of uh, technology, different metals being used in transmissions today, not unlike radiator fluids, which we'll talk about at another time. Uh, you got to be extremely careful. So Dan is the answer man, and he's available free of charge to you at 855-660-4261, 855-660-4261, or anytime throughout the broadcast, it's Bob at Autoworld radio.com right now let's welcome our certified lubrication specialist the man himself dan watson back to auto world dan how you doing i'm doing great bob it's a great evening and nice to be on auto world radio well, it's certainly nice to have you on board and certainly uh, it was last week when we were talking you brought up the point that we we really should spend some time telling folks about transmission fluid because just like everything in 2017 it's gotten a a whole lot more uh, complicated you know and not only transmission fluids for automatic transmissions but for for manual gearboxes as well some of our younger listeners may not realize that manual transmissions uh, also need some sort of gear lube well bob you nailed it. It is a complex fluid. In fact, many times I will say in training classes or other events that uh, the most complex piece of equipment in your vehicle, standard vehicle, is your automatic transmission. You just laid that out all the way up to 9 or 10 speed transmissions. And we have to understand that the fluid that goes in these components uh, it is. It has to be a multi-purpose fluid. Now, it's a hydraulic fluid because we move things around in that transmission to the to the user automatically. But inside the transmission, something has to be the prime mover. Something has to move different gears and gear sets and line up different things. And that means you have a hydraulic action going on in the transmission. So your transmission fluid has to act as a hydraulic fluid. It also has to be a lubricant for moving parts and by the way what really blows people away is they think somehow that an automatic transmission wouldn't have the same type of you know they wouldn't have like steel gears and things in it like a manual transmission that in many cases they're used to it using some type of gear lube or other lubricant and here you got this very thin fluid which really is less than a 20 weight it's down uh if you looked at the on the scale they're referred to sometimes as 10W fluids because that's the closest thing on the, on the scale that they, they come to. But they're just under the 20 weight, uh, viscosity range. So they're light fluid. And there are gears in that transmission that mesh with other gears and they have to be lubricated and not wear out 
just like the gears that have the gear lube over in a manual transmission. So I've got to keep this light fluid. It's got to act as hydraulic. It's got to be able to lubricate uh, a group of roller bearings that support the shaft. Then it's got to be able to prevent these steel gears when they mesh from uh, wearing. And then comes the next part, which is probably the hardest for people to understand. There's a set of wafers which act as clutches, and they have... They're like abrasive discs that are on a spline, and what happens is when those things are pressed together by hydraulic pressure, that's what causes that shaft they're uh, splined on to start rotating. So they've got to come together like in the old days or even now with a manual transmission. You know that the clutch plate has to hit the moving plate in that assembly in order to transfer the energy through the tra manual transmission. Well, in the automatic transmission, I've got these these wafer clutches to worry about, and they've got to come together. And they've got an abrasive surface that has to uh, give them the ability for to, to set in the friction of that causes them to come together and hold. So i got to make a fluid that will support that, not interfere with it. I can't have a fluid that would cause those things to continually slip because if they did, it would just wear out the, the clutch faces over time and my transmission would be useless. So... I have to worry about the friction coefficient, the viscosity of the fluid, and I have to worry about this thing when you start it up in real cold weather because what if that fluid that I've got in it really can't hardly move? Well, my hydraulic functions that take place aren't going to do too well if the fluid won't hardly move when it's cold. Yeah. So i got a thin fluid, but then transmissions run hot. Many people think, well, that transmission is not like the engine, right? No, it's... In many ways, the transmission will eventually mimic the temperature of the engine in these new cars because they took away, with all this aerodynamics, they took away the airflow that goes over the transmission. So they put a cooler transmission oil cooler up in the bottom of the radiator in a lot of applications. So if the radiator is running 200 degrees with the thermostat control, then the oil that comes up that we're cooling it'll probably leave and go back to the transmission pretty close to 200 degrees because it's in the bottom of that hot radiator. So wow. it's a difficult lubrication, as we call them, regime. I've got a lot of things to make this fluid do. And then my manufacturers put different requirements on. A, a company like Honda says, hey, we want a really pretty good stiff shift. When that transmission, those clutch plates come together, we don't want any slippers. We want that thing to to catch, bang, you know. Then people like Ford and Chevy and Lexus and people that Cadillac, who's got these really fine vehicles, they say, no, 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 we don't want to jerk the person's coffee out of their hand when we shift gears. We want this thing to have a certain amount of slippage to just slide into gear. So it's just a nice, smooth operation. So I've got different OEM, original equipment manufacturers, stipulating different requirements on this transmission fluid. And so as we talk about this, the number one thing to tell our customers is you better make sure you meet the actual manufacturer's spec for your transmission. And many people say, well, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just uh, tell them, you know, it's a GM. Give me the GM fluid. Well, uh, that's going to be hard to do because there's uh, Dextron 3, Dextron 3G, and... Uh, you know, Dexon 6. So which one is yours? And it makes a difference because all of them, yeah. in some cases, can't use the same. So, so what does it become? Basically trial and error? Damn. No, no, no. It's easy for you to determine it. But right after this break, we'll go into the details of how you can figure it out. Dan Watson is with us. If you've got a question, 855-660-4261. And we've got a trivia question we'll give out on the other side. You can also email me, bob at autoworldradio.com. Whoever comes up with the answer to the trivia question, we've got something good for you. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. You may recognize that name. He is our certified lubrication specialist. And we're not talking about motor oil. We're talking about transmission oil, the role that it plays, and 
and uh, talking about modern transmissions as well. Uh, technology has really come quite a way in, a, in my opinion, a rather short period of time. Dan, I mean, as I said at the top, I mean, who would believe, you know, we, we would have eight, nine, and ten speed automatic transmissions out there commonplace, not in, you know, supreme luxury cars or high performance cars, but regular cars as well. Well, it's true, and one thing we can say about what they're doing with transmissions overall is they're trying to keep, if you can keep the engine at a sweet spot in its RPM and just change gears in order to make better speeds to move up the line, then that engine's in its um, best efficiency range and you will get much better fuel economy. Remember with an old uh, three-speed or four-speed manual, you're, uh, and you got a tachometer. So they tell you in the owner's manual is that maybe when your, uh, tack gets to 2800 or something, that's the sweet spot to shift to the next gear, okay? Whatever it said in those original manuals for the manual speed transmissions. But, you know, everybody's gonna do it a little different. Somebody like a little more aggressiveness, so they run it up to 32, 34, 3500 RPM and shift the gears and everybody's having fun, right? But that eats up a lot of fuel. So if I have a transmission that is shifting uh, up to 10 times before it gets to full speed, then it has kept me in that relative sweet spot for maximum efficiency on my, what they call, RPM and torque curves on the engine. And that's why these guys are doing it. It's, it's not for our comfort. It's for our maximum efficiency in these vehicles. And that's where everybody's headed. Hence, they've come out with what they call a constant velocity transmission. And that's a whole different animal in itself. And by the way, it doesn't use standard automatic transmission fluid. It uses CVT fluid. So this is an area where, as the owner of a vehicle, you just need to be careful. And here's the one thing you don't want to hear when you ask your service center or whoever's going to be uh, doing the service on your transmission. You don't want to hear the reply, well, we just use a universal ATF that we get. It's good for everything. Let me just be clear. There is no universal ATF that is good for everything. There can't be. There's mutually exclusive specifications uh, on fluids, so you cannot have one fluid that meets two mutually exclusive products in the same container. It doesn't work. So don't fall into that. And one of the things that we see is, for example, in Anzol Synthetics, uh, some years back, they had to split the transmission fluid into what they call fuel-efficient low viscosity transmission fluid and the standard fluids because so many new vehicles were dropping the viscosity level in the transmission, which would give you greater fuel efficiency. And people say, well, wait a minute. You're only moving a minor amount of thickness in the fluid. How in the world is that going to make that much difference? Well, it doesn't in mild operating climates. But they do it because so many vehicles are sold in the snow belt, if you will, or in the part of the country that can get to zero or below for several days during the winter. The number one loss of fuel economy in the vehicles that are made today is cold weather operation until that vehicle warms up to full temperature. It is never did they address this so much back in the 90s and times because when the government had their fuel efficiency testing that you had to do, it was done in a laboratory with the wheel turning a dyno. But today, in order to put a fuel economy rating on a car, you have a whole variety of different uh, environments that car must operate in to achieve that overall fuel economy. And one of those is cold weather starts, winter operation. So the immediately the, the auto manufacturers realized that if they're going to have any decent fuel economy, they better find a transmission fluid that doesn't act like a brake for the first 30 minutes that you drive a car in cold weather because it's killing you. It's dropping fuel economy by 25 to 35 percent in that first uh, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of operation, depending upon the temperature. So, again, that's what forced these guys to thinner fluid. Now, uh, the problem is, Bob, it's real simple. <laughs> These transmissions a lot of times are operating in the in the 200 degree range, okay? And when you start operating with these thinner fluids, 
towards 200 degrees, you're operating in a very, uh, what should I call it, uh, uh, intense environment. Let's <laughs> just call it that for the transmission of the fluid. That's a very intense environment because that fluid is not designed to run at that. So consequently, uh, we have uh, people like Toyota and uh, Honda's following suit and these different guys and some of the GM products that are now stipulating that you must run, must run a synthetic transmission fluid because they don't see how running that thin of a petroleum product that it can survive in that environment of higher temperatures. You put a transmission under low, tow something in particular. Is anybody out there listening that has a tow vehicle? You tow your horse trailer, you tow boats, you tow lawn maintenance trailers. Whatever you're towing, your transmission can run upwards of 50 to 75 degrees hotter than normal. And when it does that, it pushes that oil up into the 250 plus range of temperature and it's beginning to really uh, have trouble. It starts to produce oxidize, oxidation and varnish in the transmission and you get a little bit of that varnish in between those clutch plates and you're headed for a cascading failure over time. So you just can't argue with mother nature. <laughs> it won't yeah. take those kind of temperatures. It can't do it. Okay. So. It's important to take care of that transmission, Bob. I think you could tell everybody how expensive they are. They are not cheap to replace. They most certainly are not. Uh, um, a number of years ago, you know, 2020 hindsight, I wish I had turned the vehicle in. And I, I, it was my beloved 1998 Corvette, which I held on to for quite a few years. But in 2005, it needed a new transmission. It was a four-speed automatic transmission, and, and it cost me $5,500. And I know for a fact that some of the advanced transmissions of today are a, a whole lot more expensive than that. Well, and you mentioned a car that is a hot-running automobile. It's a powerhouse, yep. but it runs at a higher temperature, both motor and transmission, than the standard automobile. And there, the end result, the temperature was the killer that would have eventually taken the transmission out. There you go. The words of expert Dan Watson. We'll take a pit stop and then more around the bend right here on Auto World. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. My pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Giving your radio a broadcasted tune-up. This is Auto World and your host, Bob Long. Have you heard the story of the hot rod? Welcome Lincoln back, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me true. live all across North America and on great radio stations everywhere coast to coast. Uh, east to west, north to south, border to border, and also around the world at GCNlive.com. We've got our go-to guy with us. He, along with uh, George Douglas, have been our primary sources of information when it comes to synthetic motor oils. And uh, come November, uh, Dan is going to take over all the interviews here on the show, so I'm really looking forward to that because Dan is such a wonderful wealth of knowledge. And before we answer a couple of these automatic transmission emails I've got, why don't we make sure and give out your website and email and telephone number, Dan? Okay, my website is the lube page. Dot com, just like it sounds, thelubepage.com. The email is, again, my name, Dan Watson, at thelubepage.com. And my 800 number is 800-370-2986. And, you know, I would just mention here, Bob, that there's a couple of pretty good, there's a, a good magazine article that I wrote for a magazine, and there's a pretty good YouTube video on transmission fluids that I did a while back. They're still very pertinent, and uh, if you want to check out the YouTube videos, I did move them all so they're accessible through my website, but you can also go to YouTube and type in Dan Watson, and you'll get a whole series of uh, YouTubes. 
Great. That's wonderful news. Let's talk about some of these newer transmission technologies that we're, we're seeing more and more. Originally, we only saw the dual-clutch transmission in really high-end sports cars, but uh, I've seen them now in some pretty entry-level vehicles. Uh, this is kind of an unusual thing to explain to someone who isn't in the automotive business, but this is basically a, a manual transmission uh, that doesn't have a clutch pedal. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. The other trans the other transmission that that we should tell folks about and these were horrible when they first came out they they were not fun to drive at all but a couple of manufacturers nissan for example has really perfected the the cvt the continuously variable transmission i used to say it's kind of like a big rubber band but they've now gotten to the point where they've even built in uh, shift points, even though there is no shift points, just to, to make it feel like a regular vehicle. And these can deliver some fantastic fuel economy numbers. Absolutely. I kind of think of them like the, in some ways, like the old, uh, you know, 10-speed bicycle thing that the, you were just moving the chain on the on the different sprockets for the different uh, ratios that you'd have between the gears, the sprockets. And But you're right, these the CVT transmissions have come in, again, for one reason. It's fuel economy. That's what they're looking for. And there was a lot of doubt about their durability when they first started coming into the marketplace. And so the companies have continued to really work on perfecting them because uh, a CVT transmission, especially in a lightweight car, is going to be very effective at enhancing fuel economy. And, of course, that's that's what they're working on here because not only the U.S. government but other governments require ever increasing or improving fuel efficiency ratings, and the manufacturers are working hard to do that. And mm -hmm. I would say about these CVTs, though, that people need to understand, they don't take regular transmission fluid. There's a specially formulated fluid because you put regular ATF in most of these CTV, CVTs, and what you'll end up with is they'll just constantly slip and you won't go anywhere. And you really mess it up and you have to clean it diligently out and everything to get the thing fixed so flush it all kinds of stuff so you got to make sure that a legitimate cvt fluid goes in the transmission and i mention that because you would not think that you could run into a problem with this at any kind of lube places but it has happened it's happened to people that i know where somebody thought well it's transmission i put transmission fluid in it no you, oh boy <laughs> you have to take care of your customer better than that of course the place had to stand good for it and they had to pay all the money but it can also avoid your warranty if you have a a damage to it so again got to be specifically careful with and we talked about before how do you know which one of these transmission fluids to use your owner's manual will be very specific and it'll usually have a thing that says that you have to meet like chrysler tells you you have to meet chrysler atf plus four transmission fluid so if you're going to put a transmission fluid in there uh, you go somewhere and say hey can you show me the uh, data sheet on this transmission fluid that I can see where it includes that it says specifically that it meets Chrysler ATF plus four. Or if you're going to put uh, Mercon LV, which is really Mercon low viscosity, that's what it stands for. You're gonna, so you're going to put this Mercon in. Show me on what you're going to put in, either on the if you've got it in a drum or if you've got it in bottles. Show me where it says that it meets my transmission, and I'll be happy with that. Because let me tell you, um, to buy the specific fluids that meet the requirements cost more money. And what you end up with is where some people want to cut corners, they'll try one of these that they buy that somebody told them it was a universal transmission fluid. And, Bob, they use this terminology, which is just horrible, because the company selling the people this stuff will say that it is suitable for use in all these transmissions because they know and their legal departments told them that suitable doesn't mean that you told somebody it meets the manufacturer's spec. You're just saying it's suitable for use, and that's their legal caveat to be able to say that. They never say it meets all these different specs. They always say it's suitable for use in these transmissions, and it will cost people a lot of money in the long run because a lot of times it's not really right for the transmission, 
And these manufacturers tune these transmissions to such fine specifics that they've got to have the exact right friction coefficient uh, to go along with the the way they set this transmission up to shift, you know. And then they've got to have uh, they've had these tiny little. You've seen those. Uh, uh, I guess you call it the manifold or whatever. It's like the, the piece of thing that's got all the little grooves in it where the fluid flows to change all these different things. And then you got the valve body, it's called. Those have such tight clearances in them. And so a lot of times they go, well, it's not going to be any problem. We're, we're using the thinner fluid. But you come along and put a thicker fluid in, and all of a sudden you don't quite get the right porting pressures to the right place, and you get inadequate pressure bringing those clutch wafer discs together and they start slipping more than they should, and when they slip too much, they produce clutch dust. Now that clutch dust gets into the into the fluid, and it won't necessarily be uh, that that filter that's in the transmission is more like a screen. It won't pick up this real fine dust. That fine dust will find itself to those little tiny little porting places where it shouldn't be, and they'll interfere with flow. And pretty soon the transmission will start shifting funny. You won't know what's going wrong with it, and if you don't get it into a place immediately to get the tunnel to figure out what's going wrong with it, it'll eventually wipe those clutch faces out, and then you need a whole rebuild transmission. You just got to go. So it's so important to our listeners that you do the due diligence and make sure that the transmission fluid that's going to be used to service your vehicle meet your manufacturer's spec. And if you've got any further questions, just go to the Internet and look up your vehicle on the Internet. There's so many places. You can send an, uh, an email to me and say, Dan, i got a such and such a vehicle. I don't really have an owner's manual for it anymore. What's my transmission spec? Uh, we'll send you an answer. We'll tell you what it is. Just don't guess. Guessing can be very, very expensive. Don't guess. Okay. So true. Dan is such a, a wonderful knowledge base for all of you folks out there, and he makes himself available via the phone, via email, and uh, uh, if, if you need him after the fact, if you purchase something and have a, a question or two, uh, Dan is going to work all the way, bend over backwards to make sure that you've got the right product. We'll take a pit stop and then more of Auto World. for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Broadcasting from the middle of Corvette Boulevard and Stingray Avenue, this is Auto World with your host, Bob Long. Dan Watson is with us, one of our lubrication specialists, and we've been spending the vast majority of this hour talking about transmission fluid because you really got to pay attention. It can cost an awful lot of money, the CVTs and uh, the, the DCT, the dual clutch transmissions that you find. Originally, Dan, those were only in really high-end sports cars, uh, you know, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, vehicles like that. But uh, because of their efficiency, they're now in in the kind of cars that uh, that regular folks drive as well. But that too is a, a very expensive technology. Uh, I know when I was at Motor Trend, they have a one of the better ones of the dual clutch. It's it's a very long German name, and it's. Uh, abbreviated PDK, and our uh, nickname for it was pretty damn quick because it was actually faster than the manual gearbox. But if you've got a Porsche out there with a PDK, you better make sure and put the right fluid in it. Absolutely. One other thing on this, these fluids, we, we've talked about automatic transmission fluids. A lot of cars come today and you can't check your transmission fluid, nor have they set it up where you could actually add any fluid to it, and they say it's fill for life. Now, here's what I want to say about that. I'm in the lubrication business. I don't know anybody making a lubricant, a automatic transmission fluid or transmission fluid, that would could possibly exceed 150,000 miles of operation. And, I mean, that would be uh, our best product, Mobile's best product, Castrol's, Syntec, their best product. Nobody recommends any fluid in our business that goes beyond that length. So 
here's the question. You got one of these cars that you're supposedly not going to be able to check the oil or service it. It's still for life. And you reach 150,000 miles. What's your options? What should you do? Yeah. I would tell you what you should do. Go to a, a, a transmission shop that says that they can change the fluid in it and go get it changed. It is, it is not worth believing that and ending up with a transmission that they probably consider from the manufacturer a 150,000 mile throwaway item. Okay. It's, it may be throw away to them, but it's going to cost you some money. And I bet you there's a lot of people out there that are going to be driving cars more than 150,000 miles. So I see that and I just cringe thinking, where did they buy this fluid? Because nobody in the industry that I know would make a fluid that they would warrant in your transmission for that length of time. So how can this manufacturer say, let's fill for life. You don't have to worry about that. I think that's the same thing they told us on CV joint, you know, on the front, yeah. that they were yeah. lubricated for life. That's the reason why you saw these shops pop up for uh, to change out CVs. All those, that's all they did was, you know, CV joint will replace you, $125 or $175, what it was at the time. <laughs> they popped up everywhere because these so-called lubricated for life CV joints wore out because you couldn't lubricate them. So. Yeah. I just warn people on this. You got moving parts, you got temperature, you got all these kind of things in that transmission. Um, I don't know of any bulletproof fluid that would go for life. I just uh, there isn't any that I know of that's available to put in these cars. So best advice: don't believe it. At, at somewhere probably way below that 150,000, somewhere around 100,000 miles, very maximum. Go find yourself a transmission shop that says, "Yeah, we know how to change that. It's no problem. We'll change it for you." <laughs> Because Some really good advice. It's just not worth the risk, for goodness sake. Now, manual transmissions, real quick. I've got a couple minutes left. Do you think it's as easy as just going and buying some gear lube and putting it in your manual transmission? It's not. It's not at all. Um, people don't realize there's there's some high performance Mustangs, Fords, right? Mm -hmm. You put Mercon transmission fluid, automatic transmission fluid, in your automatic transmission. I mean, in your manual transmission blows people's mind that you do that. But why? It works in the same gears as that had an automatic transmission. It, you're not going to overrange it because you're not destroying your automatic transmission with the same fluid, and it's got steel gears and bearings in it. Here's the insight on manual transmissions. We never wore the gears out in manual transmissions. That's not how they fail. They fail because the bearings wear out. And when the bearings wear out, they misalign the gear. And you start to make, you start to spall the gears, which is you start to break off little pieces of metal. And that gets into the bearings and everything just, you know, goes cascading into, into crunch time. And it, it destroys it. Now, here's the thing. They discovered a while back that the reason we were losing bearings and manual transmissions is because the gear that we were putting in them was too thick. Not too thin, mm -hmm. too thick. Because roller bearings don't require much of anything except a very slight oil film to be lubricated. And we're putting this gear lube in there thinking that we're going to protect the gears and we're sacrificing the bearings. Okay. So what we find a lot today is like in uh, GM products, a lot of them use the thing they call MTF, manual transmission fluid. It's basically a 5W30 oil, very similar to a motor oil, except it has a slightly different anti-wear additive package in it, of course, than the motor oil. We've got automatic transmission fluid used in transfer cases and a number of actual transmissions. We move into bigger heavy duty like these turbocharged diesel pickups and things and we start to have some pretty heavy duty manual transmissions. And what we find is a 7590 gear loop is typically recommended. But in some of the specialty transmissions that I believe they're called the get rag transmissions, they've got brass synchronizers, Bob. Now, here's an interesting thing. you got a nice brass synchronizer transmission shift like a, a jewel, okay? If you use the wrong gear loop in that transmission, it will dissolve the brass synchronizer, okay? So oh, this is boy. real serious business. The transmission doesn't work real well with dissolved synchronizers, okay? So how do you protect yourself? You go to the owner's manual on that big Dodge pickup with this get rag transmission in it, and it's going to tell you that you have to use what's called a GL4 gear lube. And you go, I have no idea what that is. Well, that means, that GL4 means that it's good with yellow metal, that it, it will protect, it will not destroy uh, brass or what we call yellow metal components. See, this stuff is it's there if you understand it, but you don't have to understand it. Just seek out somebody who will answer the questions. Go to thelubepage.com. 
fire off a question. Hey, I'm concerned. This this thing says something about using some special gear lube, and I don't know what it is. And can you help me out? Right? Yeah. That service is available. Don't guess. Get the right answer. The whole idea of me talking about transmissions tonight was to get that point across. These things are complex enough that when they need service, you can take it to a place and have a mechanic that says he knows the right stuff to put in it, and, and most of the time probably he does. But you ask him what he's putting in, and you look at your owner's manual and say, my owner's manual says this, can you show me that it meets that? Because you cannot believe the number of guys who say, well, it's gear lube, gear lube, gear lube, isn't it? No. Uh, the additives in GL5 gear lube will dissolve brass components. The additives in GL4 gear lube will not dissolve brass components. Don't you realize this transmission has brass synchronizers? No, I never knew that. Well, okay. It's not a crime that you didn't know that, but don't ruin my transmission because you didn't know that. Let me tell you, I want you to find me a fluid that says GL4 on it. They start looking for that. It's very hard to find. It's very hard to find. All of these uh, transaxles, you know, not transmissions, mm -hmm. front-wheel drive transaxle cars, that have mm -hmm. a manual transaxle in them, yeah. they all take GL4 gear, not GL5. And so it's good stuff to, to get the right information. And since at the loop page we offer it for free, <laughs> it's like, why don't we just take the time to drop an email and say, I don't understand this stuff, help me out. And we'll end up doing it. And I have to put in one, one plug here to tell you, too, that this GL4 thing, for a number of years, you couldn't find that fluid anywhere except with AMSOIL. And the reason was, was because AMSOIL recognized how important it was. Many other manufacturers had discontinued it, yet there were thousands and thousands of cars that that's all they could use. So people were at a quandary of what to do. They went to using straight motor oil or other kind of things because they were afraid to use the GL5 stuff because they couldn't find GL4. So I give a plug for AMSOIL to tell you that they're always trying to make sure they have the product that will suit your actual requirement, not sell you something that's close, but sell you something that is exactly what your manufacturer specified for that vehicle. And they'll put it in writing, and it, the specs are on the bottle, and you don't have to wonder what this stuff is because they'll clarify. And a guy like me, one of their dealers, will be willing to search it out for you and get the right stuff. It's that easy, folks. All you have to do is give Dan a call or shoot him an email, and uh, he will take very, very good care of you. Give up that telephone number one more time, Dan. It's 800-370-2986, and that website, thelooppage.com. Lots of info there. Perfect. Thank you, my friend. That will do it for this hour.